Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to the Daily Compliance News. The Daily Compliance News is an offering of the Compliance Podcast Network. January 16th, 2019, the $100 million bribe edition. First up, a story from the Wall Street Journal, How to Navigate an Office Shakeup. It gives some practical tips on how to survive an office reorganization. But really, the point is for senior managers, which is communicate honestly. The fair process doctrine in institutional justice means if there are going to be layoffs, don't say we don't have any currently planned. It's only going to cost you credibility later. Next up, Deutsche Bank has launched its second probe into the Danske Bank scandal. In an article in the Financial Times, it announces, or rather Deutsche Bank reports it's launched a second internal investigation into money laundering scandal at uh, Danske Bank's Estonian branch. In between 2007 and 2015, Deutsche Bank acted as a correspondent for uh, some $160 billion of the $200 billion that was laundered out of the former Soviet states and through the Estonian branch. It's going to be uh, certainly interesting to see how Deutsche Bank comes out of this, given their uh, lack of anti-money laundering programs previously and the fines that they have paid. Next up, this comes from the El Chapo trial, where we had the literally stunning testimony from the witness stand that former Mexican President Enrique Pena Nieto took a $100 million bribe from international drug traffickers, according to a witness at the trial. The stunning testimony came from Alex Fuentes Villa, a Colombian drug lord who worked closely with El Chapo uh, in, <clears throat> from 2007 to 2013. And in a response to the question, Mr. Guzman paid a $100 million bribe to President Pena Nieto, answer yes. Uh, that's certainly a whopper, and it's one for the record books. If it's uh, true, it's certainly going to make life interesting for the former Mexican president going forward. And finally, an article from my hometown paper, the Houston Chronicle. And I must say, it's uh, one of the sadder articles around compliance that I've recently received, recently read. Uh, Houston has uh, a world-class medical center, including St. Luke's Medical Center, where Dr. Denton Cooley helped develop the first artificial heart. Unfortunately, the center has fallen way short of those standards. And yesterday it was announced that the president, chief nursing officer, and a top physician had all uh, left the hospital. Uh, Really, they were fired because of the outsized number of deaths and unusual complications from heart transplants at St. Luke's. Additionally, there were other and unfortunately more routine mistakes in the medical care, including the putting of tainted blood into patients and indeed delivering wrong medicines to patients. We can only hope that St. Luke's improves. I hope you've enjoyed this one company episode of the Daily Compliance News. And if it's something you've enjoyed, please let me know. And when we have such a day as we had, uh, where we can dedicate it to one company, I will do so in the future. This is Tom Fox. I'm the Compliance Evangelist. As you may know, we've had several new offerings on the Compliance Podcast Network. One of those includes Popcorn and Compliance, where Jay Rosen and I take a look at compliance through the lens of movies, both current, contemporary movies, and classic movies. Also premiering in December. And finally, Mary Shirley and Lisa Fine have premiered their new podcast, Great Women on Compliance. I hope you will check that out. It's a great podcast series. We have several other offerings that we are in production and we'll go live after the first of the year on the Compliance Podcast Network.